Duvenek took John White Alexander with him to Florence ahead of his other pupils to help him find the right kind of studios. Once that task was completed, and while waiting for the class, Duvenek painted this brilliant, gentlemanly portrait of young Alexander in a few hours. Already at the time of Duvenek's classes in Italy, it was the brushwork instead of the carefully finished charcoal or crayon drawing that he insisted upon with his pupils as the real foundation of a picture. He imparted the painter's, rather than the draftsman's point of view in teaching the student, once the rough outlines were suggested in charcoal, to cover his canvas quickly with paint, boldly blocking in the larger masses. The inspiration for his classes was epitomized by Duvenek's old professor, Diaz. It was work. It was his custom at the beginning of the year to make an address to the class, and in closing his talk he always said, Now I don't want any geniuses in this class. I don't care for pupils who claim an abundance of talent. But what I do want is a crowd of good workers. This is the thought I have always tried to instill into my pupils, says Mr. Duvenek. In 1877, one of the sensations at the National Academy exhibition proved to be Duvenek's Turkish page, now in the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. The absolute mastery of all technical difficulties, the justness of his tonal values, and the solidity of his, I might say, wet into wet, straightforward painting, were all things that had never been seen before, quite as in this canvas. The manner in which the various textures of this ambitious arrangement are presented is very handsome indeed. Besides the modeling and fine flesh quality of the boy, there are the various beautifully rendered accessories, like the drapery in the back and the leopard skin in the foreground, the metallic quality of the brass bowl and vase, and finally, the beauty of the grapes and plumage of the white cockatoo, with wings outstretched and crest raised. William Merritt Chase painted the same arrangement as Duvenek, only on a much smaller canvas. In fact, the pictures were painted together in Chase's studio. Duvenek never thought his own picture was quite finished. Interestingly, while at work their money gave out, and both artists were hard put to pay the little model for the sittings. The works revealed a grasp, a devotion to the beauty of nature, at once truthful, bold, and yet how fine in color and in relation to light and shadow. And finally, a typical example of Duvenek's naive way of doing things is well illustrated in the following incident. After painting a canvas of Gloucester docks, in the summer of 1915, he was offered $1,500 for it by someone who saw it there. No, said Duvenek, I've got to take that home to the boys and show them that I've been working. He exhibited it in Cincinnati at the Art Club exhibition, and for the sake of the commission, which would benefit the club, he put a price of only $800 on it. The picture was immediately sold to the University Club. At once Duvenek turned around and bought several of the larger canvases in the exhibition, donating them to one of the high schools in Cincinnati. And in a final tribute to Frank Duvenek, John Singer Sargent gave the following glowing praise of Duvenek and his impact on art, stating, After all is said, Frank Duvenek is the greatest talent of the brush of this generation. 